The Chevy Tahoe is the best-selling large SUV in the United States by a long shot. So if you ended up on this video because you're in the market for a large SUV, you're in the right place because more than 100,000 Tahoes are sold every single year, making it the most popular option in the segment. My name is Omar and this is the 2023 Chevy Tahoe and the one I'm testing here is the most expensive one. As equipped, you're looking at over $80,000. Yeah, for a Tahoe. But let me give you a quick tour of this and then we'll talk about whether or not if this high country trim is worth it. All right, let's go. All right, so let's kick it off with the pricing details. So as we go along on this tour, you know what you're working with. To get into the Tahoe, you're looking at a starting price tag of $54,200. I would personally recommend at least starting at the RST trim for $62,300 because that's where you start getting magnetic ride control as standard, which we'll talk about more when we take it for a drive. Now the model that I'm testing here is a top of the line luxury high country trim, which starts at $74,400, which is just $400 less than the GMC Yukon Denali and around $6,000 less than the Cadillac Escalade. Would you drop that much on a Tahoe? Let me know in the comments. At that point, I would personally go for the GMC Yukon Denali or spend the extra six grand if I could afford it and get into a Cadillac Escalade. That said, let's get into the most important factors when buying a large SUV like this, the second and the third row. Hop in the second row of the Tahoe and you're working with a total of 42 inches of legroom back here. I'm about six foot tall. That is my seating position. As you can see, I've got plenty of room. Not only that, you can also slide this second row forward and back if you want to share the leg space with the third row passengers, or if you need more legroom yourself, you can just slide it forward and back. Now, depending on which Tahoe you go for, you can get second row captain chairs. Of course, since this is the top of the line high country trim, it already has second row captain chairs as standard. It also comes standard with heated second row seats, which are also standard on the Premier and optional on the other trims, but you can't get them on the LS. Surprisingly enough, ventilated seats are not available for the second row at any trim. I wish they were. Nonetheless, all Tahoes do come with tri-zone climate control, two zones for the front and one zone for the back. My test model here also comes with the optional rear seat media system for an extra $1,995. It gives you two 12.6 inch touchscreen displays in the back with a couple of built-in apps like Hulu, YouTube, or you can hook up your own video game system or your own system with the HDMI ports right there. Now to get into the third row, you just pull this latch right here twice, pull it once and the second row folds down, pull it again and it lifts up and moves out of the way, giving you space to get into the third row. And of course, let's get back there and see what you're working with. Once you get back here, you have a total of 35 inches of legroom. Let me just put this down and bring it up. That is plenty of space. Obviously this seat is moved forward. This one is all the way back. Still have a ton of room here, but this is definitely one of the most comfortable third rows in the segment by far. That said, unfortunately, you don't have any heated seat action in the third row. And I say unfortunately because the Hyundai Palisade that I recently tested had those. Now, say somebody just leaves you hanging in the third row, you can just use this button right here to get the second row out of the way. And then you just pull this little rope right here and climb out and go on and live your life. I do want to point out one thing before we check out the cargo capacity. Like other GM SUVs with power folding third row seats, you can fold them while sitting in the front. Using these two buttons right here, you can fold down the third row seats and you can even put them right back up from here. And the whole process happens surprisingly quick. It's definitely the quickest folding third row that I've come across by far. All right, let's check out the cargo area. There are two ways that you can access the cargo space. One, there's a button located right down here and that will pop open the glass so you can quickly grab or throw in items. The second way is to use a button located right here underneath this handle and that will pop open the whole tailgate. And once you get it open, you're working with 25.5 cubic feet behind the third row, 72.6 cubic feet with the third row down and behind the second row. And with both the second and the third row down, you're working with 123 cubic feet, which is huge. And of course, if you have the automatic folding third row, you can fold and bring up the third row seats right from back here. The second row is just a power release, so you can fold them down, but you can't put them back up. All right, so let's hop up front where you as the driver will be spending most of your time. Overall, this is a very comfortable place to be. These seats are super comfortable, a little bit on the harder side, but still comfortable for a long drive. You get 10-way power adjustable front seats as standard on every trim except the base LS, so that's pretty solid. That said, you don't have massaging seats here on the highest trim of the Tahoe, which would have been nice, but you don't have it. In terms of the heating and cooling action, the Premier and the High Country get heated and cooled front seats as standard. 
The LS gets no love while all other trims come standard with heated front seats. As for a heated steering wheel, it's optional on all trims and not available on the LS. The Premier and the High Country get a heated steering as standard. Also, a power tilt and telescopic steering wheel is standard on the Premier and High Country and optional on other trims. That said, one of my favorite yet somewhat useless features on the Tahoe is this power sliding center console. Using this button up here, you can slide the front center console backward and forward a total of 10 inches. Not sure what this is for, to be honest, maybe to deliver drinks to people sitting in the second row. I mean, you do have a little drawer here to hide your valuables, but it'll take a few seconds while the center console slides before you can access them, but it's pretty cool nonetheless. All right, let's talk tech now. For the 2022 model year, Chevy added a new Android-based infotainment system. You've got a 10.2 inch touchscreen display here that is all controlled by Google. You get Google Maps as your navigation system, which is pretty nice. You have access to the Google Play Store to download other apps and you have Google Assistant so you can ask her to adjust the temperature or enter a destination into the navigation system. However, she can't do things like operate your heated or cooled seats, which I've seen happen in Volvo and Polestar, which also use a Google-based system, so it is possible. But yeah, other than that, you do have wireless Apple CarPlay and wireless Android Auto, so you're good there. Now, while we're here, let's talk driver assist tech. Unlike the Toyota Sequoia, where advanced driver assist tech is essentially standard, here it is a little optional. Even on the highest trim, adaptive cruise control is optional, which is a bit disappointing. Nonetheless, lane keep assist and lane departure alert is standard across the board, and thank God, because this thing is huge to be driving around without that. And this giant heads-up display is only standard on the high country, optional on the Premier, and not available on any other trim. Camera game-wise, you get a rear-view camera as standard. Of course, a 360 surround camera is only standard on this high country trim, but optional on all other trims. Of course, it's not available on the LS. Just don't buy the LS. It basically has nothing. By the way, for 2023, you do have Super Cruise available as an option, but my test model here doesn't have it. Oh, by the way, the other thing that the LS doesn't get is this 12-inch digital gauge cluster display that is standard on all other Tahoes. The high country here gets this really cool startup animation, which makes me think that this gauge cluster is capable of more than what you have here. It's pretty informative, but you don't have a full screen map view or anything like that. All that said, the overall quality in here is pretty nice. Of course, this is the high country, so it's a slight step above since you have more leather wrapped areas. But I have to say that even the RST that I tested earlier this year was very solid in terms of interior build quality. The new Tahoe is much better than it used to be. All right, so let's talk about the exterior design really quick. It may not be Cadillac Escalade elegant, but I think this is one of the best looking Tahoes that we've seen in quite some time, and I think it will definitely age well. The High Country here has some unique touches like the High Country exclusive grille right up front, which looks really bold, and then you have the High Country badge on the side right over here on both sides, the passenger and the driver's side. You have running boards that deploy automatically every time you open the door, and they light up really bright at nighttime and they look really cool. The wheel sizes range from 17 to 22 inches. The ones here are exclusive to the High Country. That said, you've got LED headlamps and LED daytime running lights across all trims of the Tahoe, not just the High Country. You also get LED taillights as standard. Now for 2023, you get a bunch of new colors, including the Silver Sage Metallic, which is not my favorite. Any Tahoe that I would get would have to be fully blacked out. But yeah, if I was personally going to buy a Tahoe, it would be the RST trim. That's where I think you get the best of everything the Tahoe has to offer. All right, before I give you my opinion on how the Tahoe drives, let me point out a few important daily ownership highlights that I'll have to show all of you. You have a total of eight cup holders two right there in the front, and then you have two in the center console where it gets delivered back to you if the driver wants. And then you have two in the third row on each side, right there. Here are the keys to the Tahoe. You have lock, unlock, remote start, pop open your glass, pop open your trunk and panic button. Then you have a Chevy logo on the back. Door close sound from the outside and the inside. Nice. Charging game wise in the front, you have a USB-C and A port and a wireless charger right there. Second row passengers have two USB-C ports and a household outlet right down there. Those sitting in the third row get a USB-C port on each side. And let's do an indicator and horn sound test. I'm only gonna honk it once because I'm in a park and people get all crazy if you honk it more than once, so let's go. That's the indicator. Same old GM indicator. Now for the horn sound, just once. Solid and loud. All right, so let's take the Tahoe for a drive. Now, Chevy sells well over 100,000 units of the Tahoe every single year, which is well beyond the competition. Of course, you can attribute some of that to fleet sales since a lot of limo companies and driving services love adding the Tahoe to their fleet. But there is no doubt that a lot of people buy this as their family vehicle. This is definitely the king of large SUVs, and a lot of that has to do with the price tag and the convenience that it offers. The Tahoe was updated for the 2021 model year, and I actually tested the 2022 RST, and I gotta say, it's a huge improvement over the outgoing model. 
it doesn't bounce and toss around like it used to, and that's because Chevy got rid of the axle and leaf springs for an independent multi-link suspension with coil springs. You also get magnetic ride control, which helps cut back on the bouncing and body roll quite a bit. And that means that Tahoe is now more composed at low and high speeds on any type of terrain. There is no earth shattering shake that you had on the outgoing model. This is just much smoother and more comfortable. Now the model that I'm testing here is powered by the 6.2 liter V8 making 420 horsepower. You also have the choice of going for the 355 horsepower 5.3 liter V8 on lower trims, or you can go for the three liter turbo diesel making 277 horsepower. But no matter which engine you go for, you get a 10 speed automatic transmission. Now, if you go for the bigger V8 like the one I'm testing here, the Tahoe will go from zero to 60 in 5.7 seconds, which is pretty impressive since this weighs over 5,500 pounds. What's not impressive is the fuel economy. The Tahoe High Country that I'm driving here gets a total of 14 miles per gallon city and 18 miles per gallon highway. I'm averaging after a few days of driving a total of 12.6 miles a gallon. So yeah, it will definitely hurt your wallet for sure. By the way, what I didn't mention is that if you go for the high country, you can add on the adaptive air ride suspension, which makes this even smoother. If you haven't driven a Tahoe in a while, definitely give it a second look because the ride quality has drastically improved. I would go as far as to say that this drives just as well as large luxury SUVs. Basically, the best way to put it is that it no longer feels like you're driving a Silverado. That said, let's talk about the competition. You have the Ford Expedition, the Toyota Sequoia, the Nissan Armada, the GMC Yukon, which is its sibling. The only two models there that would probably make me think twice is the new Toyota Sequoia and the Ford Expedition. However, at the end of the day, I would still pick the Tahoe over everything, and that's mainly because the fact that the Tahoe is the most experienced and the most advanced of the bunch. The Tahoe and the Yukon have been both around for more than 27 years. And to me, that means they've learned from 27 years of success and failures along the way, which is why it's no surprise that the Tahoe has been the best-selling large SUV in the United States for the past 21 years. Again, the convenience, the second and third row legroom, the cargo space, the way everything is structured in here shows that the Tahoe just knows its customer base. The only thing I will say is that I wouldn't recommend dropping over $80,000 on the high country. You can enjoy a lot of the things that my $80,000 plus test model has at a much lower cost because the overall experience is the same. My pick would be to go for the RST at around $67,000, saving yourself 13 grand. On the flip side, if you really want a luxurious experience or if you want a badge that tells people how rich you are, you can go for the Yukon Denali, which actually has the same price tag at around $75,000. Or you could just spend an extra five to $6,000 over the high country and get yourself a Cadillac Escalade and show people that you're living your best life. That's what I would do. Either way, thanks for watching. Make sure you hit like, make sure you hit subscribe. Make sure you follow me on Instagram and on TikTok. My handle is at Omar Drives. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Take care. Peace. Absolutely love the Tahoe. Just don't know why people would spend 80 grand on the high country when you can just spend a little more and get an Escalade. It just makes more sense. And the Escalade comes with more standard features than a high country, so there you go. But if you're gonna go for the Tahoe, I would recommend the RST. Again, I think it looks great. It has everything that this has and the ride quality is the same. Or the GMC Yukon Denali, you can also go for that. But I think the Tahoe looks better than the GMC Yukon in this generation. That's just my opinion. Let me know what you think in the comments below.